Hey guys, welcome to iCode. With this video, we are going to start a series of videos focusing on interviews. It won't just cover interview questions, but it would be more of an end to end experience of interview. Right from the exploration round till the hiring manager round. The only round that we are not covering in this series will be the DSA round or the problem solving round. And that is because it is not very IOS specific. So in this first video, we are going to see the exploration round, which is generally the first round where candidates are evaluated and, and it is decided that whether the process should be continued with them or not. After this, there will be videos for technical round, system design and, and hiring manager round. So in this first video, Tanya would be helping me. She is an experienced IaaS developer and carries a rich experience of interviews of, of some very good product based companies. So let's get started. The exploration round typically refers to an initial phase where the interviewer aims to understand a candidate's background, skills and experience. This round is more focused on gathering information about the candidate, their career and their qualifications as opposed to assessing specific technical or problem solving abilities. So during an exploration round, the interviewer may ask questions related to your resume, work history, education or some journal experiences. The main objective is to gain insights into your background, including your previous roles, projects and achievement. Sometimes the interviewer might also inquire about the candidates motivations, career goals and their interest in the company or the role they are interviewing for. So this round serves as an opportunity for both the candidate and the interviewer to determine if there is a good fit. And these days most of the companies have started conducting this round for saving the time in case the candidate is not a good fit. Typically this is 15-20 minutes round but you should be prepared for it. Make sure that you go through your resume, recall your projects, implementations and challenges before appearing. Hi Pallav, how are you? How's your day going? Hi Tanya, I'm good. Day has been just fine. How has been your day? Yeah, I'm good too. So before starting, I'll brief you about the interview process. What all rounds are there? What are we going to discuss in this round? What are the expectations and things on those lines? Sure. So this will be the exploration round where we'll talk about your work experiences, sure. things you have been dealing with, architectures you have worked on, etc. Then from second round onwards, it will be more of a technical deep dive. So after this, there will be one technical round focusing solely on iOS, okay. a system design round and then hiring manager round. Works. So let's get start with your work experience then. Sure. Uh, Currently, I'm working as a senior as developer at XYZ company and before this, I have worked with ABC and LMN. With ABC, I worked on Streamopedia, which is a stream, streaming application. And since I wanted to change the domain, I joined LMN where I got to work on Shopopedia, which is an e-commerce application. Currently with XYZ, I'm working on a healthcare tracking app. And here my responsibilities include designing the overall architecture, implementing uh, core, core functionalities, collaborating with the backend teams and ensuring that, that the app meets industry standard compliances. That's quite some experience. I'm glad to hear that you have worked on a variety of projects. Let's talk about the healthcare one. It sounds like a complex project. Can you elaborate on any specific technical challenges you have faced during the development of the tracking app and how you overcame them? Sure. So uh, one of the major challenges was ensuring the security and privacy of the user data. Uh, we had to implement end to end encryption for the health records and, and complying with the regulations was a challenge. So to address this, we utilized the cryptographic libraries and conducted the audits and implemented the secure transmission protocols. So that was quite a challenge. You mentioned the use of cryptographic libraries. Can you provide me more details on the specific cryptographic libraries or the tools you have employed in your projects and the use cases for which you have applied them? 
Sure. So in our in our projects, we have utilized the libraries like uh, Common Crypto, Crypto Swift, and uh, and OpenSSL for security related tasks. Uh, for example, Common Crypto is is a common library used for encryption and decryption of sensitive data that we have used. Uh, common uh, Crypto Swift has been used for uh, for the custom encryption algorithms, particularly where we needed the the cryptographic methods for data protection. And on top of that, SSL and then TLS has been used for the secure communication between our app and the backend servers. So these libraries play a, a crucial role in maintaining the data privacy and ensuring the security of users' information. And especially in the application like healthcare, where we are dealing with the sensitive data of of users' health records, uh, we we needed them. True that. So in terms of coding practices, can you discuss your approach to unit testing and how you ensure high code coverage in your IS projects? Sure, we we do write test cases and I have used XC test and XC test framework for that. Uh, we also use the arrange act and assert the AAA pattern for it. Cool. So what are the architectures you have worked on? I have worked on MVC, MVVM and Viper. And how did you decide which architecture should be used and when? Sure. So the MVC, the model view controller, uh, it is it is a traditional iOS architecture, I would say. While MVVM focus on data binding and the separation of concerns, Viper introduces even more separation between components. And I would choose MVC for the simpler applications. Uh, MVVM for those which are having complex UI and the logic and Viper for the large team driven projects to maintain a clean and, and scalable code. Uh, what do you prefer for building UI storyboards or XIVs or programmatically building UI? I am not considering SwiftUI as of now. Right. So uh, both storyboard and XIVs offer rapid prototyping and uh, visual design, making it easy. But at the same time, they can lead to merge conflicts in the team. Um, especially when you are developing with a team. While programmatic UI creation takes more time, but it provides a more fine-grained control and, and avoid those conflicts. So personally, I prefer the programmatic approach, but I would say that the choice depends on, on the team, the experience level of the developers, because uh, if not everyone in the team is very comfortable with the programmatic UI building, it can instead backfire. Makes sense. Uh, regarding the version control, how do you handle the collaboration and can you describe your experience with Git and Git workflows? Sure. I have been using version control since my very first project itself. We use Git flow branching model for, for uh, feature development and bug fixes. We also follow the pull request workflows using, using the platforms like GitHub, uh, Bitbucket for the code reviews. And we found this approach good for the collaboration. Okay. And can you elaborate on your branching strategy in more detail? How do you manage feature branches and releases? And how do you ensure the code quality during the pull request process? Definitely. Uh, our branching strategy follows the Git flow model, which means we have a few key branches types. We maintain a develop branch for ongoing development and, uh, and feature integration as well. When we start working on a new feature, we create a dedicated feature branch of the develop. Once the feature is complete, we submit a pull request back to the develop. For releases, we create release branches from develop when we are ready to prepare for a new version. Uh, and this allows us to continue the bug fixes on develop without disrupting the release process. During the pull request process, uh, code quality is maintained through the code reviews and automated testing. Our PRs are required to pass through various automated checks, including the unit test, uh, coding style, build checks and, and things like that. So the code reviews uh, is done by the team members ensuring that the changes are consistent and uh, you know they are with the coding standards. And what about the hotfixes? How do you manage them? So any necessary hotfixes are made on a separate hotfix branch which is created of uh, the master branch. Okay, so moving towards debugging. Can you describe your debugging process when you encounter a crash or a bug? Mm -hmm. What tools and techniques do you use? So when a bug or a crash occurs, I first review the error logs and use the Xcode's debugger for uh, pinpointing the issue for narrowing it down. That's the common practice, I would say. And for the more complex problems, I turn to LLDB for low level debugging and the third party tools like reveal for inspecting the hierarchy and, and during the runtime. 
Um, in addition to this, we have also implemented the proper logging throughout the code base and that assists us in identifying the issues. What do you use for logging? So for logging, we have our own logging libraries, which we have developed in house. And on top of that, we also use Firebase for reporting the crashes and events, which helps in debugging uh, when the crashes occur. Okay. Since you have mentioned about Firebase, which is a third party library, mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned about libraries for encryption as well. So what is your approach mm -hmm. for benchmarking that when and where should you use the library? Yeah, totally. I mean, I agree that, you know, it might seem like that we are using a lot of libraries, but uh, all of them are for a specific use case and doing everything in-house would have resulted in reinventing the wheel. So to answer to your question uh, for the benchmarking, we first assess the SDK's documentation and the dependencies to ensure the compatibility with our project. Then we create a separate branch, uh, perform the integration and thoroughly test the app to identify any conflicts or regressions. Uh, this also involves the evaluation uh, for the increase in app size, launch time and other vitals. Once the stability is confirmed, then we merge the changes to our main code base. Yeah, makes sense. So let's discuss about the app deployment. So while you submit your app to the app store, can you provide an overview of the steps involved in that? Sure. So for the app submission and dealing with the challenges related to the app store, we do have a separate release team which takes care of everything involving the code signing, provisioning, certificates uh, and things on those lines. But I do have a fair knowledge of all this because in my previous organization, I used to handle the entire release process. Uh, they were not having the release team. So have you faced any challenges with the app submission and how did you deal with that? In terms of challenges, uh, it mostly includes the, the resolving of issues identified during the app review by the Apple reviewers. and uh, and, and that can range from the design inconsistency to privacy policy violations and some very weird issues at times. So the important part is to keep yourself updated with the Apple's evolving guidelines. Uh, I think that's the crux. How did you handle those rejections and ensure your app was compliant with the guidelines? Yeah, so for that first we carefully reviewed the rejection feedback and made the necessary changes. Then we resubmitted the app ensuring that it adhered to the guidelines. At times when we feel that there's nothing wrong with the app, yet it has been rejected, we appeal to the Apple reviewers and uh, most of the times it, it gets sorted with that. Yeah, sometimes reviews gets very tricky. Yeah, indeed. I mean, uh, yeah. you, you can't just imagine that, that what went wrong, why it has been rejected. Cool, Pallav. That's pretty much from my side. I don't have any more questions for now. If you want to ask something, please go ahead. I feel that it is important to ask the right questions at the end of the interview. To get a comprehensive understanding of the company, the role, how your skills and goals align with the company's roadmap, it is important to understand all these. You can also ask about the tech stack they are using. Because imagine that the company is having, let's say, 80% of their code base in Objective-C and you are being hired for the migration. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, but probably that's not what you are looking for. So asking about the team, your responsibilities in that, it also becomes important. And in these unpredictable times, you may want to consider the company's roadmap before deciding that you want to join it or not. So what are the plans? How is business operating? And other questions on these lines will give you some clarity. And with all these, interviewers also get an impression that how interested you are. So that helps. So I would suggest that before appearing in the interview, do some research about the company and ask relevant questions when you get the chance. So that's pretty much for this video. Our next video in this series that is the technical round, it will be coming very soon. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next round. Till then, happy coding.